the purpose of life. Do you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, for example, imagine you bring a man and you say this man is a smart man, he's a wise man. However, he's been having many children and he doesn't take care of them, he abandoned them, he doesn't care about them. No one will call this man smart man because he doesn't care about no one, you see. And the best example belongs to the Creator. So, go back to the Creator. Now, what is the logical and rational way for us to know our purpose of life? Is it to follow our feelings or is it to follow our brains? If this is the case, therefore, all of us have different feelings. We have different what? Different brains. The logic, logic, logic dictates the only one that knows our purpose of life is the Creator, the one who made us. Do you agree with that? For example, if I want to learn about the watch in details, that's a simple argument. That's what Allah said. Does he not know about his creation? The one who he created the one who created them? So now what I'm gonna do, sister, I don't have to think about Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jacob. If I establish Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet, logic dictates that we should believe what he came with. You with me? Okay? So why, why I'm saying that, to give you an example, to make the picture more clearer. Now, may Allah forbid, imagine you have a disease, okay? And I bring a doctor to you, and I say, you know, this doctor, analyze him and see if he knows. And you tell me, yeah, you know Shamsi? He knows, he's an expert. The, logically speaking, the next step to listen to him, correct? Otherwise, you'll be contradicting yourself, all right? So now, how do we differentiate? between the true prophets of God and the liars. Because based upon God's wisdom and mercy, He chose people amongst our kind to teach us about our purpose of life. But when God chose, chose them, He differentiate them from the liars in order for you and I to know who's a true prophet and a false one. From their characteristics that are known amongst their nation to be trustworthy, truthful and honest. Why? Imagine sister, someone will come to us now and he's known amongst us, he's the biggest liar. And he comes, he says, you know what, I'm a prophet of God, would you believe him? No, because why, if you're the liar, now you're just escalating, you know? So Roger dictated that the, 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 the prophet of God must be trustworthy, truthful, honest. Prophet Muhammad, anyone that studies his biography, والسلام, he was known amongst his nation to be Sadiq al Amin, trustworthy, truthful, honest. That's the first one. <coughs> the second criteria, the prophets and messengers, even though they never met each other while they were preaching, they came with the same teaching. They worship one God and they stay away from the false gods. Okay? For example, if you look, look back to the Old Testament, the New Testament, Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jacob, Isaac, Jeremiah, Daniel, Isaac, you, all of them came, worship one God, stay away from the false God, likewise the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Also, from the characteristic to differentiate between a true prophet and a false prophet, let me ask you this question. Who knows the future in details? Yeah, God. That's a logical argument. Likewise, who knows everything about this? Is the one who designed it. Now, from the criteria that the Most High gave to his chosen ones in order for the creation to know that they are prophets of God, prophesizing about the future. Prophet Muhammad means, may Allah blessings be on him. Okay, just to clarify. He lived 1400 years ago and he prophesied about the future. You don't have to be a Muslim to analyze and to observe what he said. He said there will come a time when you see the barefoot Arab man competing in building tall buildings. What you have to understand, sister, when the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that, والسلام, back in those days, the, the Arabs were not known to build tall buildings. Those who were known, the Persians, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Greeks. Let me ask you, where is the tallest building in the world? Dubai. Dubai, Burj Khalifa. Who's competing with them now? Saudi in Jeddah. How a man lived 1400 years ago? Not randomly, not tomorrow is going to rain, tomorrow Mashri says going to beat uh, uh, Liverpool. No, no. Something there was no any indication. There was no any indication to indicate what occurred. And the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, prophesizing it in details. So why is it happening in culture? No, because Allah told him that will occur. Okay. okay, so we have to understand not all the prophecies are good, meaning that because he prophesies it's good, 
Likewise, doesn't mean uh, Prophet Muhammad prophesies them is evil. Some of them is good, some of them is evil. For uh, one of them, that there is the Messenger of Allah told us that there is a signs of the hour, meaning when you observe that, know that the day of judgment is closer. So there's two types of signs of the hour, minor one and a major one. From the minor one, that the Arabs will compete in building tall buildings. Likewise, Prophet Muhammad said, will come a time when the Arabs, they will stop using a camel as a riding beast. And everyone who studied about the Arabs' nature, the camel is like his mother. Always, you know, always with him, okay? So Prophet Muhammad said they will stop using it. Did he stop there? No. He said they will start using something as a box, as a carrier, that will carry them to the mosques with their family. One of the Muslim scholars said, without any doubt, Prophet Muhammad speaking about the cars. Because if the Arabs are not using a camel as a riding beast, they have to use something else. The fact that we can observe that are using cars more than anything else, therefore how a man lived 1400 years ago knew about that. Another one, Allah mentioned the Quran, before I go any further, what do you think what I said so far? Does it make sense? Is it clear? Okay. Another one, Allah mentioned the Quran to Prophet Muhammad. Oh Muhammad, your name and your description is being mentioned in the previous books. Can someone go to Isaiah 42? Just Isaiah 42 is a passage which is in the Old Testament. It speaks about a prophet who is Who's, who's, who's coming? No, it's not. Isaiah is way before Jesus. Okay, but what is the beauty about the Quran? The Quran tells you that Prophet Muhammad been prophesied not just in the in the Injil, rather in the previous books. You know, so Isaiah 42. Okay. Let me get it for you because I want to show you to show the. So Isaiah 42, it speaks about a man coming from, who's coming to glorify the Lord. Yeah, the Injil, uh, the Injil without any doubt is lost. Isaiah uh, 42. Okay. And there's a way to prove that Isaiah 42 wasn't changed correctly. No, do you know why? Because this Isaiah, for example, the Old Testament, the New Testament, how we approach it, we approach it that we don't believe everything's been changed without any doubt. Because that's a lie, because without any doubt, not everything. Mm -hmm. However, they change certain things. Some of them which Prophet Muhammad Allah mentioned in the Quran has been described. Here, look. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not Okay, he will not cry. No, just put it here. Okay. Well you have to look, look. So here it speaks about the, the description. He mentions here. Where is it? Which is more, it goes more in narrow, specifying it. Sing the Lord a new song. His praise from ends of the earth, you have gone down to the sea, and, should that, and all that is in it, your islands and who lives in them. Let the wilderness and its towns raise their voices. Let the settlements where Kedah lives rejoice. Let the people of Sela sing. Remember these two names, Kedah and Sela. Watch this. Who is Kedah and what is Selah? Kedah is the son of Ishmael. So we know there's no prophet came from the lineage of Kedah. Genesis, we've got Genesis. Genesis. Gen here, yeah, Genesis 25, 13. So Genesis 25, 13. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael. Listed in order of their birth. Nabiot, then who? Ishmael. So, Sela likewise. Sela, Sela is a mountain in Saudi. Look, mountain Sela. So, what I'm saying, when you look to the proofs that why the Muslim believe Islam is the truth, and the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. So, the Prophet came for this people? Yes, more specific, but general for everyone. Yes. Here, yeah. Sela. So when you look how this prophecy, the Muslims and the non-Muslims agree that Kedah is the son of Ishmael. And they agree that no one made the Arabs and the people of Kedah reduce, like happy and, uh, and uh, civilize them, except the Prophet Muhammad So when you look to the prophecies he prophesies, likewise the miracle of the Quran, and I ask this question to many people, if the Quran was just a normal book, like other books, 
how this book has been, ha it has been memorized by hundred million of people who doesn't know speak the language of the book. <coughs> Do you know any book like that? It has been memorized. There's no book like that except what the Quran. And what is more miracle about the Quran? That when you speak to those who memorize the Quran, letter by letter, word by word, some of them don't speak Arabic language. And even if they do speak Arabic language, some of them make mistakes in the grammar and the pronunciation. However, when they read the Quran, they read it perfectly. Example of that to make the picture clearer. Imagine you bring me English dictionary and I'm reading it perfectly. Then you say, you know what, let me bring you Shakespeare's poems. I'm reading it perfectly with the grammar, pronunciation. Then when I start speaking to you, I say, me, no, come in, no, 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 me, no, go in, no. You think, no, no, Shamsi, you're taking a myth. You know how to speak English. You just read Shakespeare's poem perfectly and dictionary, English dictionary perfectly. And now you don't know how to pronounce the English words. That is the milk of the Quran, which Allah mentioned 1400 years ago. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّنَّ الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ We have made Quran easy to be memorized and that be mentioned 1400 years ago. That cannot be a statement of a human being. That is a statement of the creator of the human beings who knows about all of the creation. So sister, we look to Islam without any doubt the foundation of Islam, two testimony. The I bear witness, there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness Muhammad, the message of Allah. And sister, I always give this example to people in order for us to reflect and to understand why it's so important for us to wash our Creator. If I give you two million pounds as a gift, so you know, I like you, it's a gift for you too. For you, two million pounds, just go. What would you say to me, at least? Would you remember me all the time? Of course, two million pounds, you buy a nice house, you know, thank you, Brother Shamsi, you pray for Brother Shamsi. Two million pounds, a big money. Okay, now I will give you two million pounds. On a condition, give me your two eyes. Would you do that? <laughs> no, go. No, go. Because why? Your eyes is more valuable than two million pounds. Correct? What about the one who gave you two eyes for free? Why don't you thank him and remember him? So I'm saying, that's why Allah said in the Quran, If you try to count Allah's blessings, you will never be able to do so. So you already believe in the one God. So now, you and I, we accept that we should be grateful to God, correct? We should worship Him. And now, I'll ask you another question. If you want to buy a gift for your friend, would you buy a gift that you love or your friend love? Friend love. Likewise, you should worship the Creator the way He loves. That's why, based upon the Creator's wisdom and mercy and justice, He did not leave it up to our intellect to come to a conclusion how to worship Him. He sent the prophets and messengers. Allah sent the Quran, the meaning of the verse, that He sent the prophets and messengers in order for mankind to have no excuse against God on the day of judgment. Now, what Allah wants to create us, Allah wants to show us His mercy and His love. Because what you have to understand, Allah has a, has an attribute of creator, creation, it is a creator, is a merciful, likewise has other attributes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the reasons you have to, he wants to create us to worship him. Likewise, to implement his attributes. Likewise, in order for us to recognize one another, likewise to test one another. From Allah's attribute is mercy. That's why Allah created paradise. If you worship the creator, you turn away from the devil and worship him, you have paradise. If you turn away from him, then from Allah's anger, create the hellfire. However, Allah mentioned the Quran, Allah will not punish anyone until the proof become clear to them. The fact that the universal science, the creation of God, likewise what the prophets and messengers came with, goes in line with each other, then it is upon us to learn and understand that look, don't turn away from your creator. Because Allah mentioned the Quran, O oh, Muhammad, say to them that if you reject your creator, then know, sure, then know the death surely will meet you and you will return to God and will inform you. How many people left the houses and never come back? Nothing is guaranteed that this life except death, sister. So what do you think what I said? Does it make sense to you? Is it clear to you? You know that I should be grateful to creator. So I will tell you, sister, there's one thing you have to understand. Sometimes people think I'm under pressure. When you go to the grave, and I go to the grave, and we don't know when, no one will be inside of you except yourself. Allah sent the Quran, لَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَ فُرَادَكَ مَا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً 
وتركتم ما خولناكم وراء ظهوركم you have returned to us just as we have created you in the beginning and you have left your wealth and everything behind you you know so if it makes sense so I'm inviting you openly to accept the truth and worship your creator without any doubt you want to have a relationship with your creator and the proof that's why I keep telling you if it makes sense to you is it clear to you then you should should not let anything stop you I know the Satan will come I'm not ready I can wear hijab I cannot do that I always mention this example if you have a cake and you eat all of it at one time what will happen to you you vomit correct in order for you to feel the sweetness of the cake you take it bit by bit likewise step by step the first thing you learn God's right over you then of course the prayer like you know whatever Allah legislated sister is good for you and whatever tell you to stay away from is bad for you Allah said worship him alone that is good for you when you bound down to your creator and you are be grateful to your creator you that is good for your body physically and spiritually charity many people complain sister they say why there is uh, uh, poverty why people are dying Allah gave us a solution give donation and charity we are paying singers ridiculous money just for them to come and misguide our young people okay we pay footballs someone who just running after a ball a million of money while people are dying out of hunger so is the problem with God is the problem with us problem with us correct so can I ask you what is stopping you to become a Muslim and submit to the Creator in what way to study, to read, to ask, okay. once, once, no. once I feel it. Okay, no problem. But what we say to you, that doesn't, you accept Islam, I'm saying, if the foundation is clear to you, then what comes after is going to come under the foundation. You understand? So sometimes, of course, you, you want to learn, but remember, me, myself, I don't know everything about Islam. I'm not a scholar, okay? However, I know the foundation is clear. When the foundation is clear, then you accept it. There's no problem, you should learn and learn more. But I'm saying, remember there's always something you have to remember that anything can happen to us. So if that is a clear, then Alhamdulillah. Understand? As for learning everything, then that comes after. Understand? So that's because out of experience, when I teach, when I give dawah to people, that many times, many bar uh, one of the barriers, one of the common barriers that stop them to accept Islam is that I don't know everything about Islam. Or likewise, I'm a sinner, correct? But I'm not perfect, you know? Likewise, I don't know everything about Islam, but if the foundation is clear, it's better off to leave with the keys of paradise than to not, understand? But just, the reason I'm mentioning that, just as a word of encouragement, of course. Why? Because the Messenger of Allah told us, which Allah gave him the knowledge of the unseen, he said when the person wants to become Muslim, Shaitan, Satan, which is our enemy, try to stop you. If it's clear, then you should accept it. If it's, a, uh, it's up to you, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you can, I don't want to put you under pressure. Understand, it's everything up to you. The Amr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran, La ikraha fi din, at tabayyana, rujdu min al ghay. Naam, there is no compulsion in the religion. The clear guidance became distinguished and clear from the misguidance. And Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَى الْبَلَاغِ الْمُبِينِ What is upon the messenger to convey the message. And if you see me like I'm very so eager for you to accept Islam, because the messenger of Allah said in the hadith, he said, لَإِنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجْلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حَمْرِ النِّعَمِ He said to his companion, if Allah guide one person through you, it's better than the world, the meaning of it, better than the world and what is in it. You know, that's why the prophets and messengers, they came with what? لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. We don't want you even to thank us or to reward us. Why? Because the reward with Allah is greater than anything else. Okay. Shall we from there? There. Bangladesh, mashallah. I can give you a leaflet. There is how Islam, but woman. And uh, we have class today as well about for new Muslims, beginners, as well even for the non-Muslims. Yeah. yeah, it's free of them. So, like Islam and that. So, uh, what I want you to do, sister, make sure when you go away, because, you know, we are too busy here, without any doubt. Not here, I mean, it's big in the In our society, we are very busy. You know, sometimes a gas bill come, makes you forget about God, you know, electricity bill, the university, college. But remember, this is just diversion. No problem. Allah mentioned the Quran that take your uh, part 
participate in the dunya without any doubt. Uh, work to do something good in this world. However, that is not the main target. The main purpose is that the hereafter. This life is like a bridge. No one build a house upon the bridge. Sorry, correct? No. Everyone use a bridge to cross from one side. That's it. This life is like a bridge. So you want to cross to the other side. And what you need on the other side is what? The foundation. Believe in the Creator. All right. Do you have any question you can ask? Do you have any question or something? Inshallah ta'ala, no problem, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. All right. All right. It was nice meeting you. Assalamu alaikum, Take care, yeah? All right.